If you love autocrossing and driving on track, a Porsche is a great tool. They have good handling, they're quick, and they stop well, and they generally are up to the task of being dependable on track out of the box. However, Porsches aren't perfect and sometimes they require modifications to avoid expensive issues. 1997 to 2008 Boxers and Caymans, for example, can have oil starvation and cooling issues when driven hard on track with sticky tires for extended periods. Watch this video for step-by-step -step instructions to install the deep sump and anti-slosh tray, as well as an oil sump guard plate. I would also recommend installing a Porsche Motorsport Air Oil Separator, which I've already installed on my Cayman. And if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. This video has been made possible with the help of Total Seal Piston Rings, the most precise, efficient, and innovative piston rings available. The first thing we're gonna do is drain the oil from the car. I've already driven it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so to get the oil hot. Uh, it's probably cooled off a tiny bit since then. Uh, the reason we're on a lift and it's so low is because when the oil comes out um, and we have this particular oil catch can, um, it's gonna spill out a little bit. So I'm doing my best to not create a huge mess. It also helps to wear gloves like this when you're doing this particular part of the job and have some paper towels ready. And just as I thought, oil got everywhere. Now, after making a mess and changing my shirt, uh, after uh, letting the oil drain from the drain plug, um, it's time to get the oil filter off. So I use a spin-on filter, so it's not like the normal canister filter that you might use on your Porsche if it has the stock set up. Um, but this honestly makes changing filters a little bit easier and I can go down to my local auto parts store to get the filter. So now I'm going to let the oil filter uh, housing and the uh, drain hole just drain for about 10 more minutes just so that there is no or very minimal dripping uh, so that when I take the oil pan off it comes off nice and easy with no splashing. All right now that the filter housing has drained out. I am putting some oil onto the filter housing uh, seal or gasket just to be sure it goes on nice and smooth. Now filters should go on about hand tight and there we are uh, at this point I'm going to raise the car uh, so that it's easier to stand and work and I will be dropping the oil pan so at this point we are ready to take off the oil pan uh, and there should be 13 screws here or bolts here before you start your project you want to be sure that the kit you uh, that you have has all the right hardware so they're not torqued on very hard. I believe the torque is low, um, around seven pound feet, if I'm not mistaken. And might as well keep these bolts, but do know that we will be using longer bolts when we put the deep sump uh, when we put the deep sump back in. I'm not sure if. This oil pan has ever been off previously. I 
They should be easy enough to just spin off at this point. Something else I'm going to do is also, I'm going to remove this uh, to get a little bit of room when I pull down the oil pan. somewhat lucky that I don't have to take out the swirl pots, which are these black things right here. Um, they are the correct 997 style swirl pots that come with the Allen engineering kit. Um, I will be taking out the uh, oil pickup because we're going to be putting a spacer to drop it down a bit more uh, with the kit. It's time to take out the old baffle, and that will be followed by a nice cleaning of the oil pan. And again, we'll not be using these bolts. We will not be using this baffle. To clean all of the sealant off of the oil pan, I'm just going to use a razor blade. I've cleaned off the oil pan and uh, there's a little bit of residue left with the brake clean that I used or the brake cleaner. So I'm going to take this denatured alcohol and give it a little bit of a rub down. So while we have scraped off all the gunk on the oil pan, we also have to do the same over here. Again, I'm using a razor blade and scrape it right off. This is the oil pickup. When we took the oil pan down, uh, there was nothing inside of the filter area. Um, I've taken a good look at it. There are no cracks. We're going to reuse it. The um, O-ring looks good. Uh, because of the deep sump, it requires a uh, an extension for the oil pickup and this will go up into the sump with this the oil pickup and its filter on the flat side like so now you're going to take two of the bolts that were provided in the LN kit And they will go through like so and through the through the sump or and through the oil pickup so it'll look like that it is time to install the oil pickup and what we're going to do is put the uh, um, side with the uh, seal up onto the oil sump pan. Um, I've already lubed it up with some oil, as well as lubed up the, this side of the oil pickup. I put a little Loctite onto this screw, and we are going to put it into 
the sump. And get that side started using the new longer bolts, which are needed because of the extension. And now we're gonna go and get the other bolt. Screwed in by hand first. There's a little bit of Loctite on it. And these are a 10 millimeter. With the oil pickup installed, we are getting very close to the point where we will be assembling the oil pan and putting it back up onto the sump. So what I'm doing here is taking some uh, a cloth with some denatured alcohol and cleaning all of the surface mating areas uh, so that the sealant will stick. I'll probably come back around here one more time, but I'm doing this now so that later on when I want to get that oil pan on with the Loctite with the sealant, I can do it without having to worry about anything. And so as you can see, we've scraped off all the residual sealant from beforehand and I'll take one last look as well before Proceeding just to be sure that there's nothing else on here that's going to surprise me. We'll also wipe up a little bit of this residual oil so that we're, when we're putting the oil pan on, none of it drips onto the oil pan and uh, makes the seal that we're trying to achieve leaky down the line. Before moving on, please note that Ellen Engineering has updated the instructions for its deep sump installation. The new instructions say to place the gasket between the sump extension and anti-slosh tray, not between the sump plate and the sump extension. I bought my kit before the instructions were updated. Ellen Engineering says that those who have installed the kit with the old instructions do not have to worry. If the car does not leak, then it's good to go. I have driven my Cayman thousands of miles since the installation and it remains leak free. We are ready to put on the metal gasket onto the oil pan and line it up as so. Everything looks good. And then in a second, we'll want to have these ready because we are putting these spacers for the baffle, which is here, and it has these nice doors there. This will end up going on top like this. Before we do that, the next piece of the puzzle is to place the spacer on top of the gasket. I'm gonna line this up with just a couple screws here, just to be sure we're all good to go. It looks like we're good over there. We're good over here. So the next part is what you might consider the tough part uh, because we will be putting the anti-slosh tray on here like so uh, with these baffles or these spacers in, in between each area as well. Uh, the tough part here though is that we are using some Loctite right here in a tube um, and specifically you're not supposed to use too much. We're gonna be going all around right in the center and then in a circle around each of these openings. And I have been told specifically by Charles Navarro who created this kit not to use too much Loctite sealant because if there's too much used, some of it can squeeze inside the pan and clog up the oil pickup that we just installed. And so I will be doing my best to use the Loctite in the manner that the manual suggests. 
and not use too much. All right, now that we have the Loctite primed, I am going to begin, and hopefully I don't screw this part up. All right, at this point with the sealant on, I am going to put the anti-slosh tra tray right on here. All right, after putting on the Loctite and lining up the tray and tightening these down, hand tight first. Remember the anti-slosh tray and baffle bolts here uh, are a bit shorter than the ones that you use to bolt the assembly up to up to the car. It is time to put Loctite all around these edges. So I am going to give it one last little dab of denatured alcohol. In places I just touched it. And now I'm going to start applying the Loctite sealant in the same way that I did earlier. So careful not to use too much. All right, at this point we have the whole assembly fixed up. Everything's moving as it, sh as it should. We've put some Loctite on the uh, screws to the baffle, screwed that down, and then we are now about ready to install this deep sump onto the engine. Since we are just about ready to install the deep sump. I'm going to give this one last wipe down since the oil has continued to drip for a while. Uh, there's some denatured alcohol on this cloth. So I'm going to wipe down the edges a little bit. We have the deep sump here and it goes up like so and you want to get it in there before any oil drops onto it and have it pretty much going straight on like so. And it's good to have a friend as well so that once you place it, they can hand you a screw or a bolt, I should say. 
Get these started by hand, hopefully. the goal at least. With as much, the least amount of movement as possible. Now that I got the first couple started, I'm gonna put the rest in. Should be lined up pretty well. You want to hand start these so you don't strip any threads, which is important to your you want to torque them down in a crosswise pattern from one side to the other. Uh, this needs to cure the uh, the Loctite sealant uh, for 24 hours. The SI5900 needs to cure for 24 hours before we're able to put any oil in it. So um, we're going to let it sit here for at least 24 hours. Now that we have allowed the sealant to cure for 24 hours, it's a new day, and I'm back ready to install this sump guard. Uh, which will protect what is now the lowest point of the car other than these uh, aero flaps right here. So this is also the Allen Engineering sump guard and how it attaches is uh, to the rear subframe bolts as well as the engine mount bolts which are right up here. So we'll be loosening those up uh, in the front, we'll be taking these off and sliding it in between, and it should go up like so. So what we'll do here is just be loosening these bolts using a 15 millimeter uh, crescent wrench. We want to loosen these enough to fit the fairly thick plate in there. And then again, we'll be using a 15 millimeter to loosen up this pan here. All right, so now we're placing the pan up to its mounting area, which gets held right there nice and easily. So at this point, I have the pan where I want it. This is where it'd be beneficial to have a friend help out. All right, now that we have that kind of loosely fitted and, and hanging up there, it is time to make sure that we're all lined up in the rear it looks like we are.
Now before I tighten everything down all the way, I'm just going to make sure on both sides that I have the amount of clearance that I want. Once that is set, I am going to tighten all the way down. All right, now that that's mounted up, we are going to finish off by screwing these bolts back up and securing the rear of the sump plate. So as I had assumed would be the case, the sump guard does not allow the underbody panel to fit in place flush, uh, so it will require a little bit of trimming. Last but not least, we are going to be placing the oil in the car, which for the 2.7 liter Cayman like mine, uh, stock calls for 8.2 liters according to the manual. Uh, so with two quarts of extra oil capacity, we could technically do 10.2 quarts. However, um, we can also run the oil below the maximum level by half a quart to a quart or so, which actually helps the air oil separator, which is located right around here, um, to not be overwhelmed by oil. Um, so we can maintain more oil, uh, but below the maximum fill limit, which will help the air oil separator do its job properly. So we'll slowly be pouring this oil in. So at this point, I'm putting in the ninth quart, uh, which would normally, without the deep sump, overfill the oil in the car. And now I'm going to put in a little bit over nine, maybe a quarter of a quart or so. We're hoping to get a reading on the oil temperature or the uh, oil level gauge. I'm going to close up the oil cap and then start up the engine. So I started the car up and uh, of course, since there's been no oil in the car, it'll make a bit of noise. Uh, what you're going to want to do is, after you fill the car up with oil and start it up, uh, you're going to want to check the oil, but to do so, you're going to have to wait a bit for the electronic, you're going to have to wait a bit for the electronic dipstick to do its thing. So I've already taken the car out and driven it a bit, so it'll only take a couple minutes here. And that's... Uh, oil level that's right at the bottom. So I'll probably fill it up a little bit more, not a full quart, but maybe a quarter of a quart to get it a little bit above the minimum. Um, but again, we do that because um, we have extra oil, still have more than stock, and we don't want to fill it to the top so that the air oil separator doesn't have to work as hard under high G cornering, say if I took it to a track or an autocross or drove hard on a back road. And that's it. The job isn't hard, but it does require care. And there are other ways to fix oil starvation and cooling issues with oil accumulators and adding a third central radiator. But installing the deep sump kit improves several things at one time. It adds two quarts of extra oil to improve cooling, the anti-slosh tray to prevent oil starvation, and the motorsport style baffle to improve oil flow within the sump. It's a clearly beneficial upgrade for Boxers and Caymans from 1997 to 2008 that are driven hard.